Weekend that I had as well. I went up, went uh, up to the snowy mountains, and uh, yeah, no, it was just great to get away from all the drama that's going on in US politics at the moment. Um, I think Joe Biden. What's what has happened to Joe Biden? I think he's. Um, Called it quits. So Nancy Pelosi uh, has taken over. Now, why would Joe Biden want to all of a sudden call it quits by before you know this presidential election was going to happen? Um. Now, clearly, yeah, obviously, this attempted assassination of Donald Trump as well was very sad in politics. Um, even you know that there are people who don't support Trump, and that's okay. But to go to that extent to try and assassinate the former president of the United States of America, okay, not only that, He's had to deal with all these really stupid, stupid, stupid uh, trial going on, rig trials and all this stuff. Um, now, it uh, worries me, okay, that a trial like this, Stormy Daniels and all this hush money bullshit and and uh, Donald Trump didn't pay his taxes and yet um, the Democrats were the first to be pointing the finger at him. And not only that, all the crap he's had to put up with. And what has Joe, what's your US President Joe Biden done? Absolutely fuck all. Tell me one good thing that Joe Biden has done for the Democrats besides stuffing things up with the cost of living crisis and inflation as well. Because it's economic, okay? And for what? Uh, A failed presidency that, unfortunately, the president is very powerful and is able to pretty much... It, it, it affects the whole world. Um, all the lies that we heard back in 2020 presidential election, rigging the election, people were doing. Um, I think Dinesh D'Souza did a, a documentary about election fraud that was going on. Just so. So clearly, it's quite possible Joe Biden has had something to do with this the whole time. Okay. Son, his son Hunter Biden was found guilty. All right. You know the laptop and all that stuff. But yeah, Joe Biden and the Democrats, Hillary Clinton as well, are the first to try and cover up their own uh, mess. Okay. In order to. Yeah, make themselves look good and blame it all on Trump. Blame it all on Trump. Try and frame Donald Trump, make him a convicted felon as a president, which I have no idea how this trial went ahead. 
Uh, at least Barack Obama does have sympathy for the man as well, and is, and that's that's fantastic. At least Obama, you know, is showing support for Donald Trump to be the president of America. Um, clearly, it's not uh, it's not just Donald Trump; it's his family that have copped it bad from the media and uh, it gets to a point where you know enough's enough um, now I, I, now Nancy Pelosi I, I, I think we all did see it coming where uh, she was going to be the next candidate to run uh, for the Democrats um yeah people are uh fed up with all the lies um from Joe Biden as well going on so that that's the issues that we've got not only that the cost of living crisis the inflation problem uh small businesses having to close the doors and because some idiot, some stupid bastard decided to try and assassinate Donald Trump. Uh, for what reason? I mean, this has just gone on for far too long. Okay. I saw on uh, Instagram as well, uh, Hulk Hogan, as you're formerly known as Hollywood Hulk Hogan, uh, was going off his head about how pissed, you know, how much we, he, he was pissed off about Joe Biden, Dana White as well. And now, at least Dana White uh, was was um, honest to CNN. I think he did an interview back in 2020. In, in the middle of the uh, coronavirus pandemic, that you know Donald Trump was much better to have as a president. And it was such a shame that apparently, when uh, Joe Biden got elected, he stuffed up the border problem. I think if you watch the Donald Trump interview with Dr. Phil, okay, he did talk about the border. Um, now, these bastards out there will do everything they can to try and blackmail Donald Trump. Um, in order to put he try and damage his reputation, which he suffered quite a lot. And it does get very personal, okay, when it's a, when they start writing stupid articles in the tabloid about the family having to cop it as well, which is just um, not good at all. So that's the thing. It's... Uh, one of those uh, issues that, unfortunately, that it does need to be addressed. All right. Now, you got to look at it like this, all right. When I started, uh, you know, scroll, you're scrolling through your social media or on X, okay, and then you wake up to these headlines. Yeah, I, I think I remember it was last week that, yeah, it was uh, all in the media trying to bombard us about Donald Trump being shot. But, you know, for Donald Trump, guys, to stand up and wave his fist in the air 
saying a big fuck you to Joe Biden. Okay, that's that takes a lot of balls to do that after someone's attempted to shoot your head off. And this did happen. And good on him for standing up for the United States of America. Okay. Now, if this had to happen to, happen to Joe Biden, that too would be very sad. It should never happen to any uh, president, whether you're a Democrat, Republican, Libertarian, or if you're a Greenie or whatever, Liberal. You know, to go to that extent to try and assassinate someone's life and I don't know how that bullet missed Donald Trump, honestly. He nearly, his life was nearly ended, okay? Now, we can, it's quite possible that, yeah, some Democrats have something to do with it. Uh, apparently, the Secret Service snipers weren't paying attention. Um, you know, presidents or, you know, when they're campaigning certain places or even anywhere have to wear a bulletproof vest because you just don't know. Um... You just don't know. Apparently, there were people stating to the media, BBC, that um, they, they, they saw the sniper, the gunman. But how come the Secret Service people didn't pick up on it straight away? They're there to protect um, Donald Trump as well. So, in Washington, uh, that's the job of the Secret Service. Uh, is that what they're called, Secret Service? I'm, I, I don't know. I'm probably saying that wrong, but I could be wrong. That's all right. So we we can we can basically go into. A bunch of conspiracy theories, okay, as to, you know, how this was all planned, what the motive was behind all this stuff. Um, but the honest truth is, someone nearly took a man's life. Okay, a lot of this has got to do with the media stirring up the shit as well, and that really starts to piss me off. People want to stir up trouble in the media, okay? A man nearly lost his life, okay? Because a lot of it's got to do with media crap as well. Um... Yeah, I think we're just, uh, yeah, fed up with it all and um, people are just sick and tired of all the bullshit that Joe Biden's told us and promised us. Really, the guy's f fucking screwed America over, honestly. America's become so much worse. Um, I think maybe it was a good... Uh, move for the Democrats to appoint Nancy Pelosi. At least she's got more brains than Joe Biden does, to be honest. Um, clearly, if you watch the debate, I didn't even bother. Joe Biden just looked like he didn't even, didn't even know what the hell he was doing. So that's... Uh, Yeah, one of those issues where yeah, these uh, things need to be addressed, of course. 
Um, yeah, because uh, the American people are quite um, sick and tired of it as well, which is just not good. And, yeah, I feel that, yeah, it's a time that, uh, we all just, uh, yeah, wake up to the fact that, hey, Biden, Joe Biden has actually just screwed us all over, screwed America over, um, And, uh, yeah, made things much worse than they basically needed to be. So that's what's, uh, that is what's going on now. Um, that is, uh, what is happening today. As I'm speaking. So I don't know why Joe Biden would want to call it quits all of a sudden if he's been up to no good. He got elected as president and uh, he didn't deliver on his promises like he said he would. And uh, for years and years and years, I was, I was sick and tired of hearing that Donald Trump was a racist, he was this, that uh, he was a bad person. You know, because I guess uh, in, my, in, my, in my journey of studying uh, politics, you know, especially my undergraduate Days in music, I mean, a lot of the lecturers didn't were very, I wouldn't say they were anti-Trump, but they just didn't like Donald Trump. And, but, uh, you know, you'd go to a lecture and they'd be like, ah, oh, Donald Trump has become a racist. You know, and you start to wait, we start to wake up the truth and, and what's been happening and the Democrats and their denial and denying everything. They, uh, you know, the first to uh, put uh, fear and intimidation tactics into the population, into people. But yeah, when someone in their party mucks up, oh, they they want to deny it all, and. Uh, Play the victim. You know, if if you do watch the Doctor Phil interview with Donald Trump about the inflation, the cost of living crisis going on, and how it's affected mental health, not just that COVID nineteen as well. Um, when people don't have money to go out because simply the cost of living is very expensive. And that does affect people's mental health. And I believe that, yeah, we all have a right for luxury items. And why not? But, uh, yeah, unfortunately, in ec tough economic times, people are the first to cut back on entertainment. And it's such a shame because we need our entertainment. Um, part of the thing too is I've been reading about coffee now. I, I love drinking coffee. I, I love going out to a cafe and um, drinking a nice cappuccino with almond milk, no sugar, supporting small businesses rather than McDonald's, McCafe. For some reason in my journey, uh, overall as a coffee drinker, I 
I don't know. I just don't appreciate McDonald's coffee. You know that? I really just don't. It's like in Oran Park. Uh, they're building a KFC. And, oh, God, a Kentucky Fried Chicken. Um, now, why is it that the government favours corporations over small businesses? Oh, they like to build more corporations and fast food corporations, but the, the, they're the first to heavily tax a small business to the point where you're virtually having to almost price gouge your customers just to keep up with it and keep your overheads going. Um, again, this is what running a small business is now. It is not even worth it anymore. All right. Um, that's the thing. It's become a point where you know we just all get fed up with it. Okay, and that's. Uh, that is how it is as well going ahead and moving forward you know obviously in a business as well you do the best that you can to prepare for the tough hard economic times that we're in but speaking of business too like when i was down at the snowy mountains you're seeing a lot of snowboard shops in australia now when i went up to per uh, i think it was perish it was a perish of blue threadbow perish of blue got even more colder than threadbow that was a huge snowstorm that hit um it was it was it was beautiful um, to see snow like that in Australia. Um, no, and look, it was just nice to get away for a couple of days out of the office, out of the studio. Yeah, so I did that. I felt great. Yeah, I felt wonderful. Just to, yeah. Have, have, just have a great time, I guess. So that's what I did. And, uh, you know, I, I felt really good. Really good, I did. I felt but uh, you know seeing you know those nice um, ski shops you know especially when you go to Canberra I haven't been to Canberra for god years um, you obviously feel the weather changes quite a fair bit as you drive down that way but no it was, it was it was really good just to yeah have a change of landscape and just get away from all the crap that we hear in the media about how Donald you know how Donald Trump is bad. Yeah, the American people are just, yeah, just fed up with it, to be honest. Um, yeah, so that's, that's what's happened. And uh, I, I see it as a, 
how can I say it? Yeah, it's just been a uh, tough time for us as well. A really tough time. No, but, uh, you know, like I said, I've been playing Grand Theft Auto Five, and it's been really great. It's funny. Trevor's the best. He's the funniest GTA Five character you can have, and it does help take your mind off what is basically going on now. Okay. Um, now, the, but the point I'm trying to make is obviously, do you know, Rishi Sonak lost the election. Labor has taken over. Nigel Farage gets, I don't know, a milkshake thrown on him. And what do we get? We get Labour back in the UK, have taken over. Um, obviously, the resignation of Boris Johnson. Uh, the Conservatives, yeah, again, will need a rebuild. Same as it's, I mean, this, this is going on everywhere. Like the the Liberal Party of Australia needs a re rebuild as well because of all these lefties in the Liberals. The thing about the Liberal Party, Dominic Perrette, I saw on his Instagram, has uh, resigned. The former Premier for New South Wales. Um, yeah, had decided to resign. Um, but, uh, you know, obviously Chris Minns is the premier that we have. Okay. But, uh, yeah, this is, uh, this is, uh, politics, I guess. Um, yeah, he's, he announced on his uh, Instagram that he's retired as well. And, yeah, he, I guess he did. Uh, yeah, did the best that he could um, uh, during his time as Premier. For New South Wales. Um, yeah, speaking about uh, footy and NRL, apparently referees, I don't know, they must hate the Canterbury Bulldogs because Canterbury lost by two points against Cowboys. And I've noticed that uh, they have uh, improved on their playing as well. And starting to look more like a strong football team. So there's definitely potential in the club. Uh, State of Origin Game 3 and, and well done to New South Wales. Really well done for winning up in Suncorp. 19 years it's taken New South Wales to win in Queensland. And, and well done. It was a very good game from the moment they played. Um... So that, that was it. Um, from the moment New South Wales received the ball in the first half, you saw a side that definitely, definitely um, were willing to fight. Uh, and they wanted it. They were hungry for the win. And 
after the loss in game one down at uh, Acor Stadium again because of the stupidity of the referee who's rigging the game on purpose, playing with his whistle as well. <sighs> I guess things just got heated. And, and when things get heated at Origin, uh, this is state of Origin, guys. All right. Now, people, these footy players are the best of the best. They're playing for their state, okay? And basically, that's just what they do. They're going to go at it. They're going to hit hard. Now, Joseph Swally, he... You know, being sent off in game one was very sad uh, to do that. Uh, obviously, we know that uh, I think he is going to rugby union. Yeah, but to send a player off... You know, that's just not cool. Yeah, I remember the days where it was like uh, you'd let the bodies hit the floor sort of thing, but where is that intensity in footy anymore? Um, I quite enjoy going to the footy, but I, I just don't like when... Referee wants to blow his whistle all the time, blowing six agains and all this ruck infringement. Yeah, like from what I saw, the discipline in New South Wales all working together was just amazing, and and. Hopefully, yeah, it was it was fantastic for us to take the shield for New South Wales at State of Origin. Queensland too, they didn't they played bloody darn good as well. They didn't give it up. They didn't they didn't give away any easy things. And for a moment, there was certain um, certain plays. Queensland looked dangerous. They they will take it every opportunity to find a way to intercept the ball. So well done, Queensland, for putting up a good fight. Um, Cherry at Daily, Cherry Evans too. He had some good runs and good hit-ups, 360 moves. Uh, yeah, great match. Very good, good match as well. And it's what the people pay to see. They they want their entertainment. Um not to be yeah you know, seeing players go to the bin because of a head rub. I mean, I don't know how long rugby league's gone like this. Um but, uh Yeah, I just get sick and tired of hearing in the media about, oh, uh, you know, they want to try and soften up the game because of the concussion problem. Yes, the concussion problem's been there before I was even born. Um, NRL, they all knew about it for years. But uh, obviously in the media... And this is the problem where media gets involved with um, uh, and sports stirring up trouble, stirring up drama, and then we get a shit fight, a very big shit fight. Okay. Now, I suppose that uh, 
Yeah, we we need to. Yeah, we need to basically get the truth out there that we can't keep being in a shit fight all the time in the footy. All right. Now I'm sitting here just doing some drawing. Working on my music video. All right. Yeah, and I just felt, uh, yeah, just called to to uh, have a podcast here. All right. And that's what I'm doing. Because I say things as they are and as they should be. Okay. Yeah, so, so that's what I believe needs to happen um, in the game where, yeah, they've, they've done all they can to clean it up. If they're just going to keep policing the game to the point where they just get too strict, then, uh, yeah, I feel that, uh, yeah, it's just not cool. But other than that, with the snow trip, we were heading up to Perisher. Right, we leave our accommodation, uh, our Airbnb. Um, we're driving there, and the traffic, my god, was so heavy like hell, it took us two hours just to get to a destination that was half an hour away. It was crazy. Um, you had buses getting bogged in the snow. Um, you had, uh, yeah, yeah, it was just people, people were literally turning back because there was just nowhere to get in. Um, yeah, no way, nowhere to get in. And, uh, that's what happened. Um, yeah, Australia is quite an interesting place. It is so big. It's like you have you know, like four seasons in the one country. All right. <laughs> Yeah, we're dri- driving down to Can well through Canberra, and you're seeing I've seen all these wind solar farms and all this stuff. I think that's for that's for things like sustainability and carbon emissions and all that crap. Um, to me, I just don't give a shit about it. All these solar panels sitting there doing nothing, taxpayers' money. That's all it is. Taxpayers' money going down the drain. That was great, you know, to experience the snow. Went snowboarding too, and that was fun. That's bloody hard work, sweating everywhere. Um, yeah, but I, one a few thing. One thing I forgot to get was like a balaclava before I left because I didn't know the snow it was going to be like a huge snowstorm. Um, yeah, so I ended up getting a balaclava up at the. Uh, I think it was one of the resorts. Yeah, but you know your car, all all the cars in the car park as well, bogged in snow. Um, yeah, and then what it was, I think it was yesterday. It was like a long day, like a five-hour drive back. You try and get a bit of sleep, but. Uh, you know, so it's always important when you when you're traveling is to get your laundry done, 
Um, and and always bring a towel. Don't forget to bring a towel. Like Tally would say, don't forget to bring a towel because you can't trust Airbnb. And they'd like, we're in the Airbnb. Um, the air conditioning wouldn't even go into our room. There was only two rolls of toilet paper. The soap as well um, was pretty much half empty, so always good to bring a block of soap or bring your own soap because you can't rely on um, Airbnb soap and shampoo or hotels. Um, so it's always good to take extra when you're traveling. Um Pillows and all that, they were, they were all there, which was nice. Um, nice place where we are staying in Jindabai and quite enjoyed it. Nice, quiet area, nice and cold. Um, obviously, yeah, you can start going up Mount Kosciuszko. That's where it uh, all the fun starts to happen. Um, being the holiday, tourist season, you have a lot of, a lot of uh, traffic. Like the, the other bus that came behind us, it took them four hours literally just to get up to a half an hour drive in the snow. Um, yeah, four hours, mate. Yeah, you know, when I was doing snowboarding in Threadbow, right, um... Oh my god, I can't I can't recall how many freaking times I fell off that bloody thing and trying to get up oh was a nightmare and my legs are stuffed because I, I unless you snowboard all the time, you just get used to it. But you're gonna fall. Ninety five percent of the time when you start snowboarding or anything, you gotta fall off. So eventually you've got to learn, how, how am I going to get myself up? We can either get up the front way, which I found just put so much pressure on my legs and knee, or turn around and push yourself up, which is much easier. I mean, all this stuff you've got to learn, of course. Um, yeah, so that's... Uh, That's the thing with snowboarding. It's uh, and skiing as well. Uh, practice makes perfect. But uh, that was good fun. It was good. But, it was, you know, the problem is you try and snowboard and there's so many people hanging around and far out. I think I ran into a few people as well at... Uh, Yeah. Also, too, when you're traveling in, in the snow as well, I went and got myself a pair of, like, um, snow gloves, but it's a good idea, balaclava, uh, snow gloves as well to carry, get multiple sets of gloves or even inner gloves if you like. Um Because uh, your hands get wet, it's going to get damp. You see, nothing's 100% waterproof. Um, it uh, And obviously, you've got to weigh in the, the wind factor as well is, yeah, that, <laughs> you know, <clears throat> we had to uh, basically rent snow jackets and snow pants. Yeah. Um, just to, yeah, be there as well. And, uh, yeah, I find, like, you know, snowboarding for me was very physically demanding on the body, actually. We ended up falling off the ski lifts as well. I don't know how the hell that happened. You have three people sitting on a bloody ski lift the snow was harder in Threadbow um, wasn't as soft as well but 
Bella Club, it does help, so definitely get that if you can. Uh, that's that's the most important. Keep your face warm. Yeah, but overall, like you guys should check out the the snow in Australia. Like you go up to like Mount Kosciuszko or Threadbow. Try and avoid it in the touristy season because yeah, it's just harder to um. get up there of course uh yeah no I, I enjoyed it um so that's what uh I did and uh yeah that was uh that was wonderful to experience something new. But what I can recall was, uh, I think it was it, um, we're in Threadbow, right? And I constantly kept seeing this black crow hanging around. Uh, I, I do, I do pay attention to a lot of nature stuff as well. So I saw this black crow and I was like, is that, uh, Yeah, is that a message from the universe or whatever it is? Yeah, but obviously, too, you've got to be mindful when you're snowboarding. You can't be doing jumps and all that stuff. You've got to, you've got to learn the basics, the foundations. You've got to get those foundations right, guys, because those foundations are the most important foundations that you can get right is those foundations because without those foundations... It's like a house without any foundations. It's going to fall to shit. You're going to fall to shit if you don't have your foundations. So that's very, um, very, very, very important to get those foundations. A hundred percent. Um, yeah, the basics of the. Are the best the instructors were great. The snowboarding instructors were amazing, um, very helpful. There, they explained it properly how to snowboard. But uh, yeah, it's always fun once you start getting the basics, and uh, Yeah, I thought, you know, if I'm going to snowboard in the future, well, I'd rather be wearing, like, knee pads and elbow guards because, like, you fall quite a fair bit. And depending on the snow, snow's not soft. People think snow is soft. It's not. But, uh, yeah, that's important. Um, to basically, yeah, keep going. Um, no, nah, but uh, yeah, it was great and it was really good. Basically. Yeah, I, I felt uh, I felt like it was it was a great journey exploring Australia as well. Um, now, the video game was been playing, uh, been sort of bin. Could you call it binge playing Grand Theft Auto Five? Oh my god! Oh, what happened earlier today? I was playing. GTA 5 and then all of a sudden the power just went glitchy I don't know Trevor was going crazy or something but uh, yeah that was that was fun GTA 5 <laughs> Trevor man that guy 
That guy's funny. We need more Trevors in Grand Theft Auto. Yeah. That was... uh, That was some good stuff as well. At uh, Nathan Cleary as well, return. And in Formula One, as you know, I've been keeping up to date with Formula One in Hungary. Uh, what happened to Max Verstappen? Um, it was uh, Lando Norris. Uh, what happened was in the Hungarian Grand Prix, and I'll just uh, tell you the results now. Uh, fastest lap was, uh, I think it was George Russell. Driver of the day was Oscar Piastri. Um, now he, Oscar Piastri, uh, was the winner, uh, managed to beat the Red Bulls. Sergio Perez was out, uh, in qualifying as well. I don't know what happened to him. He ended up, uh, he finished seventh. So he finished in the top 10, um, which was good for the Red Bull as well. And uh, the next Grand Prix will be in Belgium. And uh, as you know, I do play F1 Fantasy as well. So that's it's always good. Now, obviously, Max Verstappen will uh, win the championship, but I'm really enjoying the competition. Lewis Hamilton, Oscar Piastri, and Lando Norris coming in and they're challenging the Red Bull. And although Red Bull is my favorite racing team, um, yeah, no, it's. Uh, Yeah, re- really, uh, really great to see that. Uh, yeah, that Sergio Perez and Lando Norris, Oscar Piastri have actually. Um, Yeah. Done well to show that uh, they want to win. Um, the weather right now is 6.9 degrees Celsius. It feels like 4.9 degrees Celsius. Low of 4 degrees, top of 20 degrees tomorrow. Um, Wednesday, sunny, partly cloudy, low of 3 degrees, top of 19. Thursday, sunny, partly cloudy, low of 5 degrees, top of 22 degrees, 0 to 1 millimetres of rain. Friday, sunny with showers. Low of 11 degrees, top of 20, 0 to 3 millimetres of rain. Saturday, sunny, partly cloudy, low of 4 degrees, top of 19 degrees, no rain. Sunday, sunny, partly cloudy, low of 4 degrees, top of 19 degrees, no rain. And Monday, sunny, partly cloudy, low of 4 degrees, top of 18 degrees, and no rain forecasted. So... Yeah, that's that's the thing, guys. It's um, yeah, it's it's, gr- it's great to see that. Uh, yeah, it's um, the competition is 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 in Formula One. It's not just one driver dominating. I, I know for years, like it was Ferrari. Um, were dominating the F1 circuit. But, uh, nah, great, great racing in Hungary. Hungary's not an easy track. If you play the Hungary, um, 
Grand Prix. Yeah, you'll find that uh, it's not as fast as we thought it was. So that's what it was like as well. Okay. But uh, no, look, guys, it was, uh, you know, a fantastic episode today as well. It was great to be back. Um, yeah, I do hope that you are enjoying the podcast as well. Um, I've been keeping busy as well. Still doing the music video. Um, just uh, actually drawing, animating right now while I'm doing an episode. How good is that? I eh? can animate and, and uh, host a podcast at the same time. How cool is that? That's really cool. That's really, really cool. No, but overall, it was a great, uh, great weekend for me. And uh, definitely would love to travel over uh, in the snow in the future as well, because that's what I want to do. Because uh, that's where I want to be, because it's fun. I recommend people in Australia to go and visit the, yeah, snowy mountains because it is a great experience for us to get out, out there as well. Look, I'm going to wrap it up there, guys. I hope you've enjoyed the um, podcast tonight as well. Please subscribe, turn on your notifications. I uh, publish new uh, episodes every Friday at 6 p.m. Sydney, Australia time. Bye for now.